All right, and we are live with the... Fuck, what number is this? Number 11. <laughs> the 11th episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Jose, or Seth. Um, this many. This many. <laughs> uh, I am joined, as ever, by... <laughs> is that the fire alarm? On. Are you okay? It is. It's fine. <laughs> That's because this Would podcast that... is too hot. It's setting off your Are fire you alarms. You need to call 911. Everything's good. <laughs> oh, hey, it stopped as soon as, as soon as I said that. So at the uh, top of the show, I just want to go to remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on all the socials. That's over on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, if you're watching here on tw- on Twitch, that's where we d- go ahead and do this live. Later gets uploaded to podcast services and YouTube with shorter segments cut up and splice on YouTube for daily content. And Twitter is the best place to go ahead and stay up to date with all of us. You can find our ads on screen as well as a link tree link down in the description, which will conveniently link you to every little thing I've mentioned. Uh, today, I am joined by Sarah. Hello. Mesa, whose fire alarm has cued him early. Hello. <laughs> that was so enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting for it to happen again. And we are joined uh, by the very lovely Dio this, this evening. Hey. How are you doing? Uh, Dio, you want to go ahead and introduce who you are for people that unfortunately do not know who you are? Okay, You've not been so, graced by your identity. So most here, uh, Jose and Sarah know me because I'm the community major for SDGC podcast and their Discord, and I also write uh, reviews for a Brazilian site and games, movies, series, whatever, uh, called Marathon and Sofa. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you here. I know you're definitely one of the most. Uh, friendly people I've encountered on the internet. Um, cause what Thank was you. it? I, I think we, I, we vaguely alluded that we were going to do a cyberpunk discussion. Um, aside from the previous coverage we've done, which is mostly primarily focused on, um, some, some of the like news cycle stuff, some of the transphobic stuff that was going on. But for this is going to like very specifically be about the gameplay, be about the story. And, uh, you were, you were excited by the idea and you asked to come on. Just like, oh, hell yeah, Dio. I, I think I need to do like another tweet after this. That's just like, I I would be so happy to bring like basically anyone on, uh, especially from the SDGC community. I am just literally so swamped and stuff. It's hard to scale people out sometimes. I have a big list of stuff to do on that front. But uh, we're very, very happy to have you here. Thank you. Um, so I guess just to jump into it, this is not a news week. This is not a, it's kind of a, what we've been playing week, but it, hmm. it's just, this is just all about cyberpunk and there's no real formal, uh, schedule to any of this. So let's, who wants the magic conch to go first or, or should we do like a quick, maybe one sentence thoughts on it? Well, I mean, we should also preface that some of us haven't beaten it. Uh, Dio is the only one out of all of us that have actually beaten it yet. Yeah, so um, I mean, I guess I'll go first. I have 18 hours in. Uh, I'm addicted to side quest. Uh, I'm that weirdo that zooms in on Keanu Reeves whenever he appears out of nowhere, and I just stare at him. Like a good place. <laughs> Which is fair. I just, I just stare. Normally, he's like degrading me, so it's hard to stare when I'm just like literally out, out loud going, Keanu Reeves, please stop. But I'm loving the fuck out of it. I'm having an absolute blast. Um, and a car appeared out of the floor and caused me to, I don't know, head on collision with a weird rock formation <laughs> that was really hard that was peeking off the ground. But uh, the, the magic conch, magic conch, who, who wants uh, it? See, uh, unlike you, uh, where, where cars magically pop out of the air and make you <gasps> crash, uh, I'm just naturally bad at driving in games. Hmm. So yeah, the that driving, all by I, itself. I either have my good days where I can just go like, you, you, but I'm just, just, just like going around people, or I have my bad days where I try to make this like a dramatic stop and end up like nicking a pedestrian's ankles. And then all of a sudden, all the police are on top of me, and I'm like, no! Nah! <laughs> I'm like, stop! <laughs> so either, 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 wait, I must ask, Jose, have you had the sun appear out of nowhere and blind you? Because I have. 
I have not, but I've got a whole laundry list of other glitches. But uh, Mason, I have had what? Sun appear out of nowhere, and I get blinded, and I hit somebody. Uh, Mesa, what, what are some of the glitches that uh, you've run into? I've. Or, or I guess I'm sorry. What What are your like? What are your? What's maybe like your one sentence thoughts overall? My one sentence thoughts overall. Um, so I think my overall thoughts of the game, though I am enjoying it a lot, I'm 50 hours in, um, comes down to just one phrase and it's, it's broken promises. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's preparing you for life, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It's but just... if it's preparing you for life, where's Keanu Reeves at? That's true. Uh, it's not your life. Dio, <laughs> one, one sentence thoughts. A great story enveloped by an incredibly mediocre game. I think to build off that, my... I, damn, I'm probably going to be the most negative. It is mm. the most mediocre game I've played in an extremely long time on all fronts. Wow, it sucks be the only fucking positive person here, doesn't it? <laughs> I didn't say it's bad. I just didn't say it was Yeah, you good. did. No, 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 no. You must there, remember there's, that there's, I hate there's... everything else that pe- I like everything else that people hate. So, well, so see, there, there's great, person. good, okay, bad, and then. What are you, the IGN I'm, I... rating list? <laughs> I would. I do not disagree with those low lower ratings it got. I think they're very well. Rated. I just it feels weird being the only, I don't know, non crazy optimistic person on the internet right now. <laughs> like I don't know, it feels weird liking something that everyone else seems to hate. So for what it's worth, Sarah, I think you're crazy for a lot of reasons. <laughs> you're not wrong, and you're not the only person <laughs> to, to say that. So it's okay. But at the I, same time, it's weird. Like I'm literally enjoying myself. Wait, like when I have been away from my PS5, I'm thinking about playing Cyberpunk. All the games I got for Chris, Christmas. My first thought is. I can't wait to play these after I beat Cyberpunk. Like <laughs> it's just it's, it's wormed its way into my brain, and I'm just so in love with the experience. It's a beautiful open world. Everything in it is just God. <laughs> okay, um, just Sorry. to go by category, just to keep it semi organized. I know it's going to devolve in an utter mess as soon as I open my mouth, but uh, uh, what systems is everyone playing on? And if you're playing on PC, what settings, what specs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Mesa, what, what are you playing on? Playing on PS5. So that's technically the PS4 version running on PS5 hardware. So you're not uh, undergoing a lot of the bugginess and lack of polish that the that the base version has, right? Yeah, exactly. It's pretty much just the PS4 uh, Pro version, except it's running at 60. Okay, and uh, just overall, like in terms of, I guess maybe performance and bugs and whatnot. What what's your experience been? Overall, the performance has been pretty solid. However, it's been crash central. Whenever I play the game for like, if I play it for like four or five hours, it's easily going to be six, seven, eight, nine crashes within that time. And it, it's luckily there's frequent frequent um auto saving. And so I never lose anything when a crash happens. I've never lost anything because of a crash. But the way it just kind of kills your momentum really sucks. Is the, um, because I know it's not the PS5 version, but does having that on an SSD at least help you get back into the game sooner? Or Oh, yeah. Load times load times are very, very short, like 10, 15 seconds. Okay. Um, but, you know, just having to do it all just kind of sucks. Just a giant annoyance. Uh, yeah, as, as, yeah. as a quick little segue, um, or just a little minor point, this game does not fucking like being recorded on on Streamlabs for whatever reason. It consistently crashes like nine times out of ten. It doesn't like my Windows capture. Like it, it is the only game I've ever experienced these issues with. It just does not want me to uh, show off some of the funny stuff I've run into. <laughs> uh, kind kind of wish I had the PS5 version specifically for that. Because at least it's uh, super easy to like edit clips on the fly and whatnot. Uh, if you can even do that any anymore, I don't think you can do that because it's been taken off of PlayStation. Oh, Network. you're right. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can't share a video. You can't share screenshots, even from a disc copy, which I have a disc copy, which is what I'm playing on. Wait, what? I, th- I think you can at least 
uh, like save those clips to a USB you and then can. you can just do it you that can way. Save them. You just can't like put them on sure. Twitter or yeah. like put the put the screenshots on your like weird PSN timeline. I don't know what that's called, but you can't put anything on there. Really? Because I thought I thought my spiral video I put on Twitter was. I think that was post- before. That might have been. Before. Yeah. The, uh, they pre- stopped allowing screenshots when they took the game off of PSN. Damn. What? Because technically, you're not allowed to buy the game on PlayStation anymore. That's PSN. If you buy it physical, because there's stores that obviously still have copies of it, that's a different story. Like, that's you, you still own the game. You can still play the game. You just can't share screenshots from it. You can't share video because you can't link the game to buy it off of PSN. It's like a weird... It, that would bring us down a whole different rabbit hole. It's like a weird, like, uh, I don't even know what it's called, but it's a weird. It's easy to play. I am playing on PS5. Um, I've had crashes. Um, they, there was many before the recent update. The recent update stopped a lot of them. I still get them very rarely. Uh, the worst I've had is um, side quests glitching out to where enemy doesn't spawn or I kill them too fast. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bad thing, but I kill them too fast. Um, but like M- Mesa brought up, the autosave is so fucking generous in this game to where I've been able to, once I realized a glitch happened, I was able to go in, reload the last autosave, which happens right before the quest starts, and that normal, and that's 100% fixed it. I've never had it where it kept happening. So. Well, that's good. At least you're not experiencing, like, maybe a severe... Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, crashes were severe when the game first came out. Uh, in one three-hour session... I had nine crashes, um, but again, uh, I mean that's that's a, that's a bad thing. I'm just saying. But the autosave, like Mesa brought up, it never made me lose like a shit ton of progress. It made me maybe made me lose five minutes, but they were literally driving time and not like doing quest. Um, and then other than the sun popping into existence, <laughs> anything really like terrible happened. But the sun one sucks though because you literally can't see. So I've literally ran off a high highways and off a car because <laughs> I literally need to like pause my game and like uh, and like fix fix with the brightness. Um, but yeah, uh, in my from what I've heard, the PS5 console version is the most stable. I don't know if anyone has any experience. With I, the I've Series heard X. it was the I've heard the Series X is for at least for the consoles the go to version and, and on basically okay. all fronts. Okay. Um, but yeah, I haven't had anything. Like, I haven't lost save files. I haven't, um, story missions haven't glitched out. Uh, I just feel like I've been lucky, though. Because I have friends on PS5 who have gotten worse than I have. So I think I've just been lucky. Mm. Uh, Dio, you've been playing on PC. What, what's yeah. the hardware that, it, that you're running with? So my graphics card is a 1070, uh, and the CPU is a... 1600 uh, a Ryzen 5 so in terms of performance I wasn't able at all to get a 60 FPS and I ended up locking it to 30 which was another problem because the the game's input delay is absurdly immense and I had to go into a roundabout way to to make the input delay smaller but yeah, it was it was fine. Never really crashed. I didn't get many many bugs. Really, like but just uh, day one, I mm. I had some characters posing on me. But besides that, never really crashed. Never, I never really had uh, progress lost because of a, a bug or anything. Like I think there was one time that uh, a character didn't want to say his line or her line. And I had to reload my save. But like uh, Sarah said, it's really the, the, the save system really generous. So I didn't really, really lose that much progress. Well, that's good. Um, uh, so what would have been your results? So you had to lock it to 30. Were you playing with a mouse or a controller? I play with a mouse and keyboard. And I remember uh, the other thing we asked that what are the settings? Because I locked it at 30, I was able to basically max the game. Like Sans uh, RTX, I was able to get everything to the highest option. So it was fine. And 
Yeah, it was fine with the mouse. It, but the, the, re, the, the problem really was the input delay. But as soon as I was able to fix it, it was fine. That's weird because uh, maybe I guess that's just kind of the beauty of PC gaming too is that um, so I kind of did the opposite. I'm on a little bit more powerful hardware than you are, at least for the GPU. I'm, I have a 2070, so I can't take advantage of ray tracing. I can take advantage of DLSS, which is a lifesaver. It can literally give you like a 30 plus FPS bump, uh, depending on the title. Um, so I'm running at 1440 and I'm getting an average of, I want to say 70 to 80 frames. Uh, that's no ray tracing. Like I, like to me, if I can't run a game, on PC on 60, unless it's like very specific case scenarios, like the South Park RPGs where it literally doesn't matter. Um, if I can't play 60, I just don't want to play it. Like I'll lower my settings, I'll lower my resolution. So I'm not necessarily getting all the bells and whistles, but it does play smooth. And in terms of bugs, it's not so much crashes aside from the uh, Streamlab stuff, which is annoying, but it's not necessarily like an issue that most people are going to have. That's like a very specific yeah. thing that I'm doing on my end. Um, in terms of bugs and glitches, it has been like some kind of minor annoying things. Um, I've had stuff where my guns will just stop working. Like with my uh, tech shotguns, I'm just like, yeah, it just won't fire for whatever reason. The only workaround is to uh, mm -hmm. manually drop it out of your inventory, pick it back up in the middle of battle oh, just to weird. get it working. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, it's really dumb. <laughs> do you get the, uh, really? do you get do you get the really fun one where you you can't get your car zoomed in? Yes. Okay. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I found out the way to fix that though because my dumbass kept reloading the save and just hit start button. <laughs> if you just hit the start button, it fixes it. Because <laughs> that was happening to me and I couldn't run and I couldn't do anything. And I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" And I hit the start button out of frustration, and it worked. I've had um, I've had UI popping up in places it shouldn't be. Like my health bar is down down to the bottom right for whatever reason. Uh, ran random ass bars everywhere. Um, certain aspects of UI just not showing up. Like where it shows the icons for your grenades and whatnot. Just blank textures. You go into the map. It doesn't show the map. I had to had to quit out the game, reload it. Um, not being able to select dialogue options. I'm just like, yeah, I'm trying to scroll down. I'm trying to press down. Let me plug in control. You see if that works. Can't can't select it. Got to stick with the first one. And uh, one that was funny, I was in the middle of a conversation and um, at least on Xbox, the same, but the same key for uh, selecting an option is the same as like grab someone if you're behind so you can like knock them out or kill them. Oh, same no. button. So instead of selecting the dialogue option to continue the quest, I just punched the dude out, grabbed behind, <laughs> and I accidentally <laughs> pressed X again, and I, I freaking snapped his neck. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I no, didn't want no, to see now, the, see, see, now that actually happened to me. I was doing a side quest where I had to save some dude, and I was like, I am here to save you. And I set the controller down because I went to take a drink of water. And the right bumper in the middle of a talking cutscene, I pressed down on it, and he exploded. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no! Don't you, don't you just hate it when you're talking to your friend in real life, and you just accidentally snap their neck? Damn, it's just such an inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. See, now, I didn't see that as a bug. I saw that as a feature. Someone annoying you during a conversation? <laughs> Well, see, that, that's like, the weird part. So I could like, like the UI stuff, I couldn't tell because I a lot of that was I was in the middle of battle. I'm just like, wait, it, did I get hacked? Is this like diegetic me losing my UI interface? And I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, it's just the game. It's see, that game might up. be a glitch, though, because you can get hacked in game and your UI starts to glitch out. That's what I thought, but totally but I wasn't feel the case. Like or, I mean, I'm not making excuses, but I feel like that could have happened to you, but then your game was just like, you don't need UI to play and just took it away. <laughs> Basically. Um, Mesa, I know you had some very funny bugs happen. You want to mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, tell them? Got a couple good ones. Like, there's the, there's the, 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 the appearing car one that the, the, the people seem to like a lot. Um, paint, paint us a story for those uh, that are listening. 
So you're walking ar- around, minding your business. Yeah, I, I see a quest that I want to do, cross the map. I'm okay, let me call my car. And I do, oh, for some reason it stopped at 80 miles, 80 meters away, but I'll run to it. And the second I got there, boom, one of my other cars showed up from right under it and flew the other car into space. <laughs> You see, what, what it looked like from what I was watching, you're just walking ar- around, minding your business, a-, a car explodes as a car, as another car just pops up out of thin air, you're just looking around like, what the fuck is going on? And then the other car just falls from the fucking yep. sky. <laughs> uh, I, I've yeah. had a, I did have falling cars happen on uh, a little while ago on it. Mm-hmm. No, nothing to I'm like that kind degree. I'm sad but. I haven't had that yet. The most I've had was uh, was I was driving to a mission, and I was going through this tunnel, and you know the sun had just appeared, so I couldn't see, and a car had spawned, but sideways, sticking out of the ground, and I ran into it in just the right way where the motorcycle I was on just decided. It's like it's like you know when you get behind a goat and you scare the goat. And the goat just like falls. Yeah, that's what happened. Was I drove into that like weird indent, and my bike just went, Murk, and then I flew. <laughs> <laughs> it happened so fast that I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "Wait a minute, what just happened?" I I took no damage, by the way, <laughs> nothing, and I flew, and I was just like. Oh, this is the first time that this has happened to me. I wasn't even mad because it happened so fast that it made me like legitimately jump. <laughs> but I was like, put a car here. <laughs> um. So let's see. What What did everyone think about the world that Cyberpunk? Oh, I love habits? it. Whether it's the Badlands, Night mm-hmm. City, etc. Oh, I love it. No, I like, uh, like, yeah, I was go, thinking about, go. and I think I like the Badlands the most. Because I actually agree with you. I think it actually has the most personality. It has not only does it have the most personality, it has, you know, uh, stringing back to what I said before, it has the least broken promises. <laughs> you got to for, for me, it's, I love Night City so much. It's like whenever you come up out of a tunnel and you just see the, the, the uh, skyline, especially at night, and you just see all the like holographic bill, b- billboards and you see people walking and you can you can enter all the different bars and clubs and oh my god I love afterlife so much <laughs> just like the oh this place used to be a morgue and we named drinks after all the famous people who died like I don't know like it's something about that just like futuristic dystopian cyberpunk like this big city that I literally can get lost in for hours I like, think very I- where I get into open world games it's the world that gets me into them, and I am, like, knee-deep. Like, I am fucking swimming in it. <laughs> I think aside from, like, maybe, like, the, some of the specific bars, and I had to, like, double-check my PC settings to make sure I didn't, like, turn down crowds or vehicles to, like, save on processing power, but the world is incredibly freaking empty for me. Like, there's rarely, like, more than one or really? two cars out on the road. There's barely people walking around. And just, like, even aside from that, like like... Like we can get into later is like with the story, but and and maybe this this goes more in the story because of because of the themes and whatnot. So you can kind of classify it under the world, but I feel like this game suffers from everything it does in terms of cyberpunk seems more like window dressing and aesthetics, and it doesn't really mm-hmm. address the underlying themes. Like I like I know this is probably going to be the game I consistently mm-hmm. go back to throughout the night. Um, Deus Ex, and I never played the original, but uh, Human Revolution and what? and Mankind Divided. I ha- I own it. It's just very old and it's very rough on the eyes. Look at it so, from two thousand. That's not old right now. <laughs> it's pretty damn. It's twenty years old. Dude, give, I was playing with Transformers uh, when that shit came just, out. Just give the original Deus Ex a shot, please. I will, but but and anyway, going back to. Uh, the comparison the same way, to DSX, the same way. Um, the main story and the and and even the the side quests, like they exist there, that to flesh out um, stuff like the morality of augmentations that, which is like very inherently cyberpunk, and like the side quests here, it's mainly just like I don't know, let's go do some mercenary work, go kill this guy, retrieve this information, and like 
that stuff could exist so easily without the the, the cyberpunk aesthetic that it just it, it doesn't mean anything to me. Well, I'm not arguing anything, but you're playing as a mercenary, though. No, I understand like, that. It's just that it's just it's just the world has doesn't actually care that much about actually embracing the themes of cyberpunk as much as just being a GTA clone. Yeah, have like you done the side quests that that aren't gigs though. I have been doing every are... single side quest that comes my way. Okay, because I don't know if we're doing the same quest because I'm getting certain quests that I don't want to spoil that definitely tackle the like all the 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 aug- augmentation and the idea of the cyber side sci- 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 uh, psychosis. Not just the quest where you have to go against the people who went crazy, but like actual quests that deal talking about it, like characters in the first stage of it. So I don't, I don't know what quest you're doing, but I mean, but I've, I'm finding I've, those. I've touched everything um, that the game has given me so far, like even to the detriment of like keeping a steady narrative with the uh, main story. But like, e- like even any stuff that does go into like the cyberpunk themes, I just don't feel they're they're that substantial compared to basically anything else I've seen. But uh, Dio, you had something you wanted to say earlier? Yeah, like uh, harking to what you said about uh, Deus Ex. So even if a bit misguided, uh, Deus Ex tried on, I think it was Human Evolution or Mankind Divide, not sure, at the Og's Lives Matter. Like, incredibly misguided stuff, but at least it tried. It tried to talk about uh, rejection of people with Og's, talk about Try talking about uh, biology and whatever, and cyberpunk the read doesn't do anything about it. Like I recall in 2012 when that first trailer came out, they talked a bit about how using too many ogs could uh, make you go crazy, mm-hmm. uh, and the game doesn't really do anything with it. Like it doesn't really do anything with you with V. Uh, like I. I got my body fully customized and, and it doesn't mean a shit to the game. Uh, the factions that are heavily uh, augmented, it doesn't matter. Like, they're just a faction. They're just bad. So the game really, it really feels like a window dressing. It doesn't feel like it's really talking about the teams it's trying to present. I think mm-hmm. one of the side quests I, I, got, I constantly go back to and... Uh, not mankind divided the uh, human revolution there is people that are forced into uh taking debts from um from criminal organizations because there's people there's richer people that are paying for augmentations to give them uh, cognitive abilities and poor people have li- literally no shot to get jobs um as is let alone with the rich literally augmenting themselves to be smarter uh, so they're forced into crime. They have these ridiculous debts that they have to pay off. Like that mm-hmm. still sticks with me. I'm just like, wow, that's that's a that's a real issue that could come with uh, augmentations. That's that's interesting to go into. But um, Mesa, what are your thoughts on the world? Yeah, I mean, and you know, the, the cyberpunk lore, the cyberpunk does go into that, but the game doesn't. Like in cyberpunk, it's like you know, hey, if you have to take out a loan in order to have legs to walk and work. Do you really own your legs? And the game doesn't address anything like that whatsoever. Um, um, the the uh, there are a few missions that they definitely do. Um, they definitely do. I think I think they actually do explore like brain dances. The 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 the, the, the media of the of the series. Uh, for uh, those that don't know, uh, can you explain the brain dances? Yeah, so brain dances are basically like the like like virtual reality where you can just plug in and you sense and feel and see everything that's programmed there. I think they actually do go through those ethical questions quite well with the brain yeah. for brain dances, but I think that's mm-hmm. it. There's nothing really else that they that they even attempt at trying to question. And most of the brain dances that you see, at least for, for when I'm mm-hmm. from how far I am, from how far I am in the game, it's, it's you're seeing like the memories of like dead people, mm-hmm. and you're kind of like living through them like uh, via third person. Yes, 
like I believe the brain dances were supposed to be the the Gwent of uh, Cyberpunk 2077, but besides the main story and mm-hmm. I think a, a, some side quests, you can't really do brain dances outside of those. So why can't I watch brain? Like, why isn't there some brain dances that you can just enjoy? Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Again, well, well, what Broken I said. promises. Broken promises. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what, what life path did everyone start off with? So for those that don't know, there's, there's three life paths. It's Nomad, Corpo, and, uh, shit, street, kid. Sh- street, oh, street, street kid. Okay. Um, I went with, uh, Corpo just like on a whim. I didn't know anything about any of them aside from the little introductory text that they all got. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I don't know the extent to which how how different it is like is it is it basically from when you start to when you actually see the title screen, which is like fucking like eight hours into the game? No, I think uh, no. the the real difference is just the first 20, 30 minutes, like 20, 30 minutes and then uh, some dialogue options throughout the game. Yeah. OK, so for me, I start. Or did anyone else go Corpo? No, no. <laughs> okay damn i'm the only cool. one yeah uh that's actually pretty interesting so for me um you, you start off in corporate you're gonna go do some evil corporate spy shits and then i think it's someone from your company that you're working for they betray you they wipe out all your credits they fuck your life over blah 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 uh your best bro in the world jackie who should have made it onto the best bro category of our awards because he is okay. the best bro <laughs> He's a good bean, and I know I say this about a lot of people, but <laughs> and I know Jackie's not bad, but Jackie is a good bean. I loved him with all of my heart. Like you're right. If we get any good bro list this year, please let Jackie win. Like he was yeah, so Jackie good. Does deserve. <laughs> See, he I, was so good. I would say so. Like those first like twenty to thirty minutes, if, if that's like the only difference, I thought it was extremely underwhelming as Corpo. It's just like, yeah, let's go do this thing. And yeah, no, we just took your shit. Uh, go start from from square one. So did you guys do the apartment level that I think that was shown off in a trailer? Yes. Where you break in, there's yes. a naked lady. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that, so I think the only difference, because I went street kid for like, for like, I don't know what's, what's the word for full trans, trans, transparent. Um, I think the only difference is where you start out the the opening quest after where you start out like for me i had to go help the the bartender at this at this like local club because he because he made deals with like shady people and he's like okay i'll do it because you don't i feel bad you made deals with shady people and then you do the quest where you save um what's her name which i don't know if anyone got the side quest to go talk to her again but i did i did that quest it was really cool um Mm -hmm. yeah uh, you go help her, and that's when the paths become one. I think? Question mark. <laughs> so yeah, everyone I, did do the hotel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I went uh, nomad. Cat. And I went street hey. kid. Hey, I'm the only one nomad. <laughs> Personally, I think nomad is like to me, at least to me, based on seeing the three, what I've seen of the three paths, nomad feels like the one. Uh, that's what I was thinking, because in the story, I finally got to the where you go to the Badlands and like it already feels like pretty familiar, familiar. I'm just like, wow, this probably would have been a lot cooler if I went nomad beforehand. So so what do you do in like that introductory uh, yeah. nomad area? So an introduction is basically you're in your car, you're getting it fixed and then you leave and then you got to meet, meet up Jackie and Jackie is there because you're smuggling something into the city with Jackie, who's this is the first time he's doing something like this and he's nervous. Oh, and so you try, totally. you try, you end up getting caught and you have to drive away from the police while shooting at them. Jackie almost crashes the car in the building and takes a break. Uh, you calm him down and then you look at what you're smuggling and what you're smuggling is, is a lizard. A lizard? <laughs> Which, if you look... <laughs> If you look in Arasaka's, uh, in um, was it the 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 younger Arasaka's room? He has a lizard in in the thing, and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the same lizard that you smuggle in. 
Okay. Oh, I that... like I like little details like that. Mm-hmm. I, I love wow. that shit. Nomad is so much cooler than Corpo. What the fuck? <laughs> plus, um, anything's cooler than Corpo. <laughs> and plus, you get um. There's a mission where you have to, where Alana Pierce refixes your car, and you have to get it from her. Does she come with a gamer chair? <laughs> no, but she has gamer hair. That's true. And then I think you can actually pick her hair, like the hair she has in real life, as a hair option for female. V, okay. if I remember correctly. Dia, what was uh, Street Kid like then? Mm, it's been s- for such a long time. Um, I can also help because I actually run. run oh, it, oh uh, Sarah just explained like uh, you need to help a barman uh, with a with a small fixer. Uh, you go to rob a special kind of car. And then Jackie tries to rob it from you. Then the cops show up. Uh, they uh, should have killed you, but uh, the the cops, yeah, I think the, the the captain or whatever, is a friend of Jackie's or knows Jackie, so he just leaves you both uh, as soon as he can. And then the the cutscene that makes you end up doing the the mission with Dex uh, starts. Yeah, that yeah. they like they like basically they like basically beat the sh- shit out of you, throw throw you guys yeah. away together, and neither of you know one another. And like you and Jackie are just like sitting sitting on the sidewalk, both being just depressed. And then Jackie's like, you know what? My my mother makes great food, and your character's like, are 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 you asking me to dinner? And Jackie's like, well, yes. And you're like, fuck yeah, I want I want some of your mom's food. And you're like, <laughs> And it's legitimately, it's a really, really great. I thought it was a really great, like, friendship thing where it's like, we're friends now. My mom's going to make you food. <laughs> and then it's just awesome, like, uh, what's the word? It's just like awesome, like, a uh, montage of you guys becoming best mm-hmm. best friends. And then it leads into the, to the, to the decks or to the pre decks. Okay. Mission. So I, I think it's fair to say I easily chose the worst. Uh, I, starting think, I, think you start out, I think you start out with more money. I think I, I heard that. Yeah, Corporal starts off with more. Yeah, with the, more, uh, I, I did get Eddie. that. See, that's you got, you got, you got Eddie's. <laughs> you got I, I want the friends <laughs> along the way and the lizard <laughs> story. I don't have a lizard <laughs> story. You can actually get a cat. I did not know this. You can get a cat. I got a cat. It doesn't do anything. I did not get a cat. Uh, it just sits there. But you can pet the cat, though. Which is, which is which is which is nice. Uh, yeah. Let's let's see. Uh, oh, I actually missed one thing. Um, so I'm I'm playing on PC. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think the game is that visually stunning. Keep in mind, I'm not doing RTX, but this is still 1440 on on high settings, near maxed out, and it looks like a PS4 game. I, I, I think it looks nice on PS. I mean, it's not the prettiest thing, but I think it looks really, really nice. It's like I, I just yay. don't see why it's so demanding on on hardware for what it is. Like it's it's not. I, I guess it's an open world, but with like all the buildings, you know, there's rendering tricks and whatnot that developers can take to save uh, re- processing resources. And so I'm just like, I look at everything in there. I'm just like, I I, I don't see how the hardware is justified. And then. Uh, I, my my poor boy Keanu. I don't I don't think his face model looks that great. It looks like super flat. <laughs> He's like all pale. Like, like, let, let me see your sweat pores. I want to see your sweat pores, Keanu. Well, like, Please sweat on a me. Part of me, a part of me thought it looks weird when he t- when he takes his glasses off, like because you see him all the time with them on. But then you just realize like he's what like a forty eight year old r- washed up rock star, and I think it kind of fits. He's just like leave him on, leave him on. In that regard, yeah. <laughs> Because that's really what he is. He's like a 40-something-year-old washed-up rock star who started a riot that caused the nukes to go off. So I mean, like, <laughs> like he's like, okay, he's going to look a little fucked up. Uh, Mesa, what, what do you think of the game in terms of how it plays? Like maybe the overall game design, the gunplay, the driving, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the one part of the game that's not a broken promise 
is the way the the is the the the, the multi tiered way you can approach just about every mission. Um, the fact that you know you can focus on hacking and stand in one spot and complete a mission without you know just by standing there, or you can stealth your way and go guns a blazing. Um, what I approaches think, have you done? Um, I'm, I'm 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 a mixture, so I'll sneak in, do a little hacking, do a little headshots, you know. Um, uh, try to keep try to keep low profile. Every once in a while, I'll go screw it. I'm just gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go loud. Pull out my biggest gun and start going. Um, but um, but yeah, like the fact, and also like um, a lot of the environments. So like I bought um, so one of the augments that you can get is a double jump, and I've been able to get a double jump, and that has allowed me to basically traverse the entire city like in a completely different way. And so I can yeah. just hop up to windows that I'm normally not supposed to be able to get to. I can, I can sneak through places, jump over fences with no issues whatsoever. And it has definitely allowed, um, uh, a completely different mindset when, when approaching these missions. And it's, it's really good. I just I wish the upgrade wasn't so expensive because it's like one of the most expensive upgrades in the whole game. <laughs> Is it an actual augment you have to get from a, uh, from a ripper doc? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but it's okay. extremely expensive. Like, it's like forty k. I think. <laughs> yes, it's forty five. Yeah, percent. like it's like one of the most expensive upgrades in 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 the game. I think going back to what you mentioned about like how you c- the, kind of the open ended approach they can do with stealth, guns of blazing, and hacking. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I I I would probably disagree. Like it, the options are there. I just think that the former two are are incredibly uh underwhelming like the tech is uh f- for those that don't know you have uh ram which kind of tells you like uh each skill uses like a certain amount you can do certain things mm-hmm. but and and i didn't spec like super crazy into this i did a little oh, bit of the beginning there's a lot but, you can do but like yeah it, it came down to yes i can do like let's say 76 damage to this person and, or I can just shoot him in the face with one bullet and get the same, th- get the or, exact same result. Or you can craft the suicide quick hack and cause someone to kill themselves and stuff like that. Right. And um, and even for the stealth, I would say your verbs are are fairly limited. Like you can distract, you can blind people, mm-hmm. but it comes down to because that's that's what I like about like like stealth games. They're they're catered to that. Like let's say like Dishonored, like Deus Ex you're incentivized to do stealth because the combat is hard and enemies can fuck you up really easily. Um, even when I'm, even when I wasn't fully specced in combat, like I had a shit ton of stamina, I had a lot of health or I could re- regenerate my stamina by running into a room and just knifing people without a care in the world. Um, I, the game on normal is just far too easy. And then on hard, it's just too bullet spongy. So, so it came down to basically, I can spend a lot of time doing the slow and careful approach with stealth or using tech abilities, but at the end of the day, it's extremely less efficient unless I want to like purposefully handicap the way that I play. So if, so if anyone has heard me speak about how much I really enjoyed Watch Dogs Legion as of recently, my weird gaming thing is when open worlds give me multiple reasons, multiple ways to do things as Watch Dogs Legion did. There's like eight different ways to, to do every mission in Legion that includes story stuff, um, which, which, which Cyberpunk does. Like Mesa said, you have like four different ways that you can do every mission in the game. But what Cyberpunk does, which I'm not a really big fan of, is there's certain side missions where they implore you to go in stealth when to me, the stealth isn't really that good. Like for opening missions, it is like, like I was able to do the entirety of the opening mission in the apartment building, totally stealth, never got caught once. I, I had a great time, but as I was doing certain side quests throughout the world and they're like, Hey, we need you to break into this like police controlled area and put this little chip into this dude's car and throughout the entire mission it says oh you should stealth it we don't want getting caught we don't want this to happen and just stealthing it was fucking impossible because there were robots that that you couldn't stealth around there were people that were placed in such terrible ways to where i couldn't stealth right like the level design didn't accommodate for it 
Yeah, and it's like stealth wasn't Mm. mandatory. I'm using like finger quotes. Like stealth wasn't mandatory, but you got paid less if you didn't do it stealthily. And then they kind of chastise you. Like your person's like, oh, but we wanted to get this done quietly. Mm. At least you got it done. And then they just throw coins at you. And I'm like, I could stealth it if I wanted to. And it's like, I have a lot of points in stealth because there's points that you're more quiet when you run. Uh, you walk faster when you crouch. Like I have points and all that stuff. But then the game's like, oh, hey, we need you to stealth in this area. And it's kind of impossible to. <laughs> well, I feel like it's um, also counterintuitive in the sense that, th- that there's just straight up going to be sections where you can't stealth you have to fight mm-hmm. and if you're dumping all these points in a stealth you're going to be extremely underpowered when you do get in those situations and even like, uh, and all the other upgrade systems um like like when i started i was mainly going shotguns and then i went a little bit into melee and a little bit into rifles but it's if you want to be efficient at it, you basically have to dump all your points into like a specific you? thing. Like if, if you don't spec have fully you? like into the shotgun, um, you're you're kind of hampering your maximum potential. Like you have to pick one thing if you want to be good at it. Did you did you guys upgrade your operating systems? Yes, yes I, did. I did. Okay, because yeah, because like once I once I you know got it to like a purple one, I was fine pretty much hacking just about anything. But yeah, it's just, just just like. Uh, at least with the upgrades for me, it was, um, I've, I've, I'm basically being pigeonholed to complete my shotgun destiny, whatever. Um, because otherwise you just spread too far thin. So like, so at this point stealth, like you, you can still do like the baseline stealth, but like the higher echelons of stealth and, uh, and tech abilities are kind of beyond me at this point. Yeah, like, a good example of how, when I was talking about earlier, how the game, like, forces you to do stealth in areas that you really can't. And again, a total uh, trans transparency here. I don't know if, like, it says you're supposed to do stealth in this mission, but the game knew that you couldn't. It's I'm, And I'm not going to spoil it, because um, I'm not going to spoil this game for anyone. Uh, it's the opening hotel mission. When Jackie mentions, like, hey, we should try to do this stealthy, we should try to do this quietly. I couldn't. I killed like the first four people stealthy and then the game ended up spawning people in ways that I couldn't and I was just like uh that's basically what happened I stealth like for maybe like the first floor or so and then after that just yeah guns blazing really yeah but then I stealthed it (laughs) oh well well, look at you I couldn't do it it. like and I tried really hard too and the game does does the thing where it gives you like no ammo throughout the entire area so I was just running past everything. That's <laughs> why you gotta embrace. You have to embrace melee. Just run at people's faces, chop them up. You barely even lose health. You're good. Were you trying to kill, uh, Were you trying to kill everyone? As soon as I got the mantis blades, I did. Like, um, just to go back to it before I toss it to Dio. Um, it it just feel I don't like it when games put upgrade points in a specific weapons because I like like I'm invested in shotguns. I'm invested in rifles. Uh, so if I get a really cool pistol or sniper rifle, I'm just like, sorry, I'm not going to use you because my upgrade points don't, don't apply to you. Like that, that's basically a dead, um, category to me. Uh, Dio, what, what are some of your gameplay thoughts? So, uh, going back to what you guys were talking about, uh, stealth, one of my bigger problems with the game and it's, it's, uh, a symptom of the bigger problem that I really don't think that patches will be able to really fix the game but like for me the game is really mediocre and bugs and whatnot or a better ui for items in the inventory and whatnot won't really fix it but uh for example there were some missions uh the missions i did for the voodoo boys i had to go into a van and the the mission and the the fixer asked you to do it stealthily so I went and did it, but the way I play uh, games stealthily that offer me quick saves, that I quick save a fucking lot. So <laughs> what ended up happening is that, if, let's say, I kill the the less uh, sentry uh, soldier or whatnot and saved. And because uh, the, the, the soldiers there, the enemies were going to their loops, uh, they're how do you say it 
stealth routines, maybe? Yeah, yeah, they're routines. Yeah, uh, like they're walking paths. Yeah, they're walking paths. But say I was found by some enemy and I I like, ah, no, I don't want to be detected. I, I, I'm going to reload the game. I went and reloaded the game. And when I reloaded the 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 position was not reset to where the last time I said, like, he wasn't where I saw him being when I said he was at the, at the literal start of his routine. So oh, wow. there, there are lots of missions that I was able to basically cheese the whole uh, stuff because they didn't really attain to the routines where I said so. Like there was a, a mission uh, really far into the game where I self stealthily uh, downed a guy, and and the, another soldier that was in front of him saw him, saw me uh, downing the guy. I reloaded the game, and when I went and did it again, the guy who was supposed to saw me again was like far back into the 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 place we were. So he wasn't even be, even able an hour close to to us. So what the fuck? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the gunplay, like to be fair, uh, the gunplay in games like Deus Ex or Dishonored aren't really good, in my opinion. I but, would, I would argue that's on purpose. Like oh, yeah, yeah, Deus yeah, Ex, totally. you're not supposed to run a, run around like Call of Duty. Totally. Well, but like, I mean, it's like I, I would also argue as someone who played Dishonored Violent, which I found out the hard way, that was not the way to do it. Um, I still feel like, because I, uh, Splinter Cell Conviction, I'm going fucking back here. Splinter Cell Conviction, while it is a stealth game, it gives you options to play with guns normally, and it's good gunplay. I was just replaying yeah. that game about a month ago. It's decent gunplay. Dishonor, you don't use guns, but it's decent, like, archery stuff. It's decent this. I feel like even if a game is considered, quote-unquote, stealthy, you should still have good gunplay for those no, of us totally, like me, totally. who is legitimately shit at stealth, <laughs> but still want to play your game and at least attempt it. Like, say, if I attempt stealth, and I end up not being able to do it, I want to still be able to beat a level just going, ah, just like shooting things because I have no other option. I would disagree with that. And that if we look at something, I guess well, you're not but making GSX is for every, everyone then if, you, if you're forcing people to play your game a specific way. I, that's that's not exactly what I'm jumping to. Like, if we go to something like Deus Ex, where you cannot really take many bullets to save your life, and obviously there's difficulty options, I'm always going to advocate for uh, accessibility options and toggles and whatnot. But uh, not having good controls is kind of like the basis of even older games like Resident Evil, the tank controls. Like, the entire game kind of revolves around that. Um so the way that Deus Ex tackles it is like, yes, the gunplay is not great to incentivize you into stealth. And there's other abilities you can unlock, uh, such as literally exploding every single person in the near vicinity with uh, <laughs> hockey pucks. But um, so it, it's, it's kind of like two different levers to like kind of um, counteract it. Um, you can have great gunplay, which also means you can just kind of run and gun. You can have... Um, lesser gunplay to incentivize you to avoid using it but on the other hand you also have how hard are the enemies to kill um so you can kind of like adjust those as necessary but in terms of those i'm not necessarily too bothered by the gunplay being bad uh in the case of cyberpunk uh it's i i don't believe that's a f necessarily a functional stealth game and so, like, the primary focus, at least the way I'm playing it, and it seems the way that most people seem to be, is basically just a first-person shooter. So if your main verbs are going to be shooting, I would argue your main verbs in Deus Ex are not shooting. Your main verb is stealth and hacking and whatnot. Uh, like, yeah, that's, that, but that's how I'm playing Cyberpunk. <laughs> Well, then you're playing it wrong. <laughs> but um, j just to go off that real quick. Um, so so if your main verb is shooting, then yes, that main verb should be more than functional. Like I, I played with a gamepad and a controller and we can go into like the menus. I, those menus are not designed for a controller whatsoever. Um, and like, obviously, yes, it does feel better to play with the mouse. It's on 60 FPS, whatever. But 
it just doesn't have much of an oomph or impact behind it. It's 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 okay. And on controller, it I don't know. It's just okay. But um, I'm sorry, I went off on a giant tangent there. If you want to go back to what you were saying, Dia. So what I meant is like I recall a lot of people when Cyberpunk was first announced that uh, the game looked like it was going to be Deus Ex, but in an actual open world. So that was the comparison comparison I was trying to make because like the the stealth doesn't really I wouldn't even say that it, it isn't satisfying, but I don't like you said earlier, we don't have enough verbs in stealth. Like, I don't think going uh, into a men menu to, to hack people is satisfying. I think it sucks. It feels cumbersome. Um, and the shooting, while it isn't bad, like, I love Spec Ops The Line, so who am I to judge you good shooting or not? <laughs> but uh, uh, You're not the only one, Dio. Spec Ops rocks. So that means you'd be fighting both of us. <laughs> oh, I love it, but it's like the shooting is no, no. Real. I mean, like they would fight you and me, but oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so the shooting, which harkens to what you said, is is obviously the focus of the game, given the plethora of weapons we we have on the game. But it don't really. Besides, I don't know the shotgun. Most doesn't really feel really feel satisfying and. Given this type of game, I would expect that uh, headshots would would be more effective, but they, at least in my experience, they were not really. So, I don't know. Weird little and tangent. By default, you don't kill enemies. They all just kind of get boo-boos and fall over. Like, you kind of have to shoot them again while they're down to actually, like, kill them. That, kill them. that never happened to me. But again, I, I, I've had really good luck with, with uh, gun drops, and every gun that I'm using is uh, purple. And they do something specific. Like, I have a gun that sets people on fire. So, I literally only need to shoot people like twice. And then I can just run away and then they die behind me. <laughs> says, go pew pew. And they get set on fire. Pew pew. Another one says, set on fire. I run to the next room. I get the experience because they've died in the back room <laughs> without and me having to be there. I have a friend that's playing a ricochet, like, focused game. So he'll he'll do like headshots from the other room, and they'll they can't find him because he's not in the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, really? The one thing I will say though about the hacking, because I really want to do hacking more, I actually have upgraded my hacking to where I can see through walls where the like money hacks are, so I can just like pinpoint and just go in and just like get a lot of money. I and Mason will probably see this differently as he's playing like a uh, hacky gameplay. Uh, I don't know if you other guys would like think the same thing, but to me, the hacking is kind of confusing when you're hacking enemies because so I, many options pop up and I'm like, okay. And I always seem to pick the option that does Jack squat. They don't <laughs> even like, give oh, you like, um, something. they don't even give you like a little bit of like of a text blurb and because it, it slows yeah. everything down as you hover over someone, yeah, you but it doesn't tell you exactly what it's doing you have to learn by example what everything does and that part really sucks i think I, I like the main hacking mini game they have like if you're hacking a terminal go down oh, the yeah. lines find the I combinations i don't like doing that in the middle of combat that just like puts a giant halt in the middle of it yeah oh, yeah so. i mean i like I'm i never... like doing it when you're hacking to get m m m money i also like that the hack doesn't start right away that it lets you look at the grid first mm -hmm. and let you like plan your route. Like that's one of my favorite parts is I can, I can go to get some cash, look at the grid be like, okay, down three over four, down three over two. Like, I like how you can plan it out. Like, I don't know if that's like an OCD thing for me where I'm, where I'm like staring at it for like five minutes and I'm like, all right, I got this. But it's like, yeah, when it happens in combat, which is why I never hack turrets or anything, because I'm like, well, I'm a one woman I think, army. I, don't I think that's anything. like one of the specific instances where I exclusively hack is to disable turrets, because I typically don't use my hacking on the regular basic enemies. Um, like I, guys, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dio. I did use hacking a bit until the first half of the game, but as soon as I got the, the gorilla arms, me, the melee on the game and the gorilla arms basically trivialized the whole game. Like, 
Melee is completely broke in this game. I've been just running around oh, yeah. with my knife better than my assault rifle. Just go around, smack everyone. Good to go. Yeah. Oh, dude. Like, I... No spoilers, but the, the final boss of the game, uh, not saying who it is or whatever, but uh, halfway through the fight, I, I went, hmm, what if I try the Gorilla Arms? And I basically still walk him to death. Like, it was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I just started punching him, and I used the, an item, uh, a giant baseball bat I had, and basically killed like that. So, being quite honest, the, the bosses on this game are easily the worst of the genre, like, by far. I think even, I liked them because it added a bit of spice to it. In, uh, even worse than that one boss, and was it Mankind Divided? That could, like that could break your game or something there was like a boss in mankind divided the where final one this, yeah where it's like pick the specific dialogue option you would die as soon as the fight started okay okay that one is also <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm like, hold up i remember that boss people hated I, it I, I do mean from a from a me mechanic uh perspective mm -hmm. like they it's like they they didn't learn anything uh, from Deus Ex. Like they, they also don't have really good bosses, but they feel maybe worse. I don't know. I think at least Deus Ex fixed it a bit in the um, director's cut of uh, Human Revolution, oh, where they gave, where, where, <laughs> yeah, they they gave you uh, a lot options. more options the way to to approach it. Like you can hack turrets in the area, you can unlock like gas vents, etc., oh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Oh wait. I remember now. It was if if you went to that boss fight without turning off your augmentations or something, or it, something yeah. specific. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't make it impossible, but um, I, I think really it's more. Hard. I think it's more story wise, isn't it? Because I always went into it without it. But the one thing I will say about getting the augmentations in this game, which I really like, which I hope more games with like upgrades do this is you can find some of the more expensive augmentations literally for free. Like, mm -hmm. we were we were talking about this before the show started. Like, you, the, those, like, mantis blades, the really cool, like, which I actually found out are based off of mantis shrimp and not praying mantises, by the way, which is one of my favorite things. Um, you don't have to pay, like, 20000 for those. You can find them free. Like, if you just go to this specific area early in the game, like, there's no level cap on them. And you open a chest, now do not even fight the boss, because the boss is, like, level 30. You can get those completely free. You don't need to put, like, money down on them. And I like when games do that, because it rewards you for just opening shit. It's like, oh, if you yeah. think that this is all for nothing, oh my god, you actually just found, like, a $20,000 upgrade completely free. Like, I love when games, quote-unquote, reward you for just searching through stuff. and Or it's like, hey, you finished this quest that you didn't think was, in, was important, and then a couple hours later, you, you get an in-game call where it's like, hey, thank you for doing this. Go to this specific ripper dock. Here's a free up upgrade. Like, I love when games reward you just for, like, searching, just for doing random th shit that you don't think is important that ends up rewarding you down down the line. I agree. Dio, how many random car chase like set pieces are in the story since you've beat it? I think the only car chase is that one in the beginning. There's one in really the beginning, big. there's one in the Badlands. There's like there's like two separate two or three separate ones you do in the Badlands. Like you gotta remember that I basically only did the missions for for the ending, so I didn't really do any side quests. So if those were side quests, I didn't really get into many missions. What are, what are you were asking? Like the only, I guess the reason I bring it up is because um, I I found them to be incredibly scripted. Where you can be plugging a crap ton of ammo into a person, like you can see their health bar, mm -hmm. it's doing literally nothing. Like you, it's you have to wait until you reach the certain threshold yeah. of the map before something happens and that just totally <laughs> brought me out of it um oh no you actually do a, a mission like that with uh, takemura i believe is his name like and when he saves you right at the beginning of the game mm -hmm. yeah there yeah there's a that bunch one. of guys in motorcycles i felt the same way you did 
feels like it's more in way more script than it needed to be. Uh, what did everyone think in terms of the story? Obviously, we won't go into like super big spoilers or anything. Maybe just some like earlyish stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was about to say some of us aren't even. <laughs> I, like, I like um a lot of the characters. Um, I like Jackie. I Jackie's think... a bro. Uh, yeah, I like I don't like um other characters like 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 Takamura and Pan Am. And others, I think, though, where I, I think so far the story has really yet to have uh told me to care. Um, <laughs> I, right now, I really care about a lot, like, like I care more about the fixers than, than what's gonna happen a little bit. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, build I feel like I'm the complete opposite. I love the weird, like, love hate. I hate you too much relationship that uh, oh, like V Johnny. and and like yeah that that of V and V and Johnny have, and I know how because this happened with Death with with Death Stranding. You can tell that like Mads and Dio is gonna hate me for saying this, but Dio Mads kind of just felt like he was there. He didn't really do much, <laughs> at least to me. I know Dio. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But it's just like to me, you could just tell that like. Keanu Reeves was loving being there. Like he was enjoying himself. He was having a great time playing a character that's like a complete jackass. And I love his portrayal of Johnny a lot. And we were going to talk about this earlier. Uh, the voice actress for Feminine V's voice is just so much better than the male one. She has such personality. And there was a couple scenes where I was legitimately kind of heartbroken at the beginning, which is how she was like voicing her lines and how she was acting her lines. When I when I was just like feeling her like anger and feeling her like her like depression that I was that, that I was just like like I I love all the characters I uh, I love Jackie a lot I haven't got my feel on Pan Am yet like I like her personality but I'm just like eh. and just <laughs> Takamura's weird text that he sends you and V just be like what the fuck are you trying to say and he's like I'm talking in code and she's like don't do that <laughs> talk normally. <laughs> It's just, like, there's, like, little, like, bits of, like, humor and, like, some really intense story bits and, like, stuff stuff between Johnny and V. Like, I, I like, eat that shit up, so I'm enjoying it. Uh, I just wish this is going to be my own nitpick because I'm one of those people. I wish there was more legitimate romance options in the game, but that's just me. Because there's I only, like, two for each character, like, two, like, main story ones, and I'm just, like... <laughs> I feel like one of my complaints with this story is not necessarily cyberpunk's fault. It's more of just open world design. I don't open world games necessarily lend themselves to a uh, well paced story, just kind of inherently traveling from A to B. And then you mm. add side quests into that and other activities yeah. kind of destroys any facade of like of a strong linear story. Um, but I don't, I am not really invested in, in the main story, like, and yes, you can say like every story's tropey and everything, but I just, I don't know. No, nothing's really sticking out to me. Like I like Johnny. I like the, the idea of, um, his, his chip slowly taking over. Um, I, I really like Jackie, but like everyone else, like all the side stories, it's more just like, go do some mercenary work, go do this thing. And it's, it's weird to think that, and I, I would have to look up like the exact staff, whatever, but that this came from the same team that was working on the Witcher, because like every individual side quest, even the little um, contract missions that you did to eliminate monsters, uh, each quest giver was an actual person and they gave you like their own unique little backstory. And they had like tiny little pieces of humor of them that actually made, um, that arguably made the side content even more appealing than the main story. Well, I so think I, you can I'm also just... argue. Sorry, you can also argue it's because The Witcher came from a book series that had established narratives already in it. I mean, that's while... the same thing with Cyberpunk. It's it came well, from um... a, a, a pen and paper game is different. Players can make their own stories, even if there's like established plots in the Cyberpunk pen and pen and paper game, which which there is. What makes it different from D and D? is that there is established plot that you follow that you just throw your characters into and there's established characters and establish all this stuff. 
But, and I mean, it's kind of weird because Mike, Mike Ponsmith, the original creator of the pen and paper game, helped with this story. I don't think he helped with the characters, say for like Johnny and a few others that were in the pen and paper game to begin with. But he helps with like the base storyline and the plot. And I think this suffers from, if you didn't, if you know nothing about Cyberpunk 2020, which is the, which is the pen and paper game that this is based off of, you kind of get that fish out of water experience while with the while with the witcher yes if you read the books you get that extra background but i never felt like i needed to read the books when i played the witcher if that makes sense like i mean for what it's worth that's how i background but yeah for uh, what it's worth that's (laughs) how i experienced um i started with the witcher 3 i felt like i was missing context went back to witcher 1 2 then beat 3 and now i'm kind of in the middle of the uh, Witcher books, which I really need to get back to reading it. It's a bit of a dry read, but that's a whole other different story. There's some books in there that are not as entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, but but just to slightly push back against the the established world, like so many of those uh, little quests in um, in The Witcher Three had nothing to do with just like um, established characters and whatnot. Like they were just like nice little isolated stories that didn't necessarily contribute to to any kind of like overall narrative but i think mm-hmm. our i think one of my bigger issues with the story and just kind of like an overall issue and this, this is definitely something that more development time could have ironed out is that the game just has a severe pacing issue and i think one example i'll specifically kind of navigate around is it's the scene where you are hiding in the hotel behind the mm-hmm. thing um and like you can you can chalk some of this up to their dedication to wanting to be first person do it all in one shot um but even just the way that characters talk the way they move around it's it's just awkward pacing it doesn't feel nice and tight and it's just like i i am just actively losing interest in this and it just feels really guilty Mm-hmm. See, I feel weird because I loved that scene. See, I hate being on this because I love everything that no one else likes. Like, I loved that scene. Just being like, just being in that window area, I felt the anxiety of whenever someone would turn to look your direction, and I'm like, oh fuck, that person's gonna see, or that person's gonna see, or oh my god, we just witnessed this. Now we gotta get out. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I loved that tension, and I totally get why people wouldn't. So I totally understand like your point of view, but I loved it. I thought that tension was like I, really great. I think I look at something like um, the newer Wolfenstein games, where you know you play them all in first person, and they have these just like excellent freaking um, mm-hmm. uh, third person cutscenes, and they're just like so edited and paced the way that characters talk to each other. It's just so fucking on point, and for a game where. There's uh, the first thing you literally do is spend like an hour customizing your character. And like, that's a whole big theme in he- of here. Uh, not being able to really see your character is a gigantic wasted opportunity. And that's doing third person cut scenes could have actually let you see you. Mm-hmm. So that, that dedication mm-hmm. of first person is kind of contrary to what they're trying to do. I mean, I mean, talking about like customization, like, you can't even change your hairstyle once you pick it from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like mm, this and this game about a world that's all about making you the you you want to be. Yeah, you can't change your mind about the you you want to be. Mm-hmm. And the game it's, doesn't even feature transmog. Like <laughs> I would hope that'd be the, something that they patch in. in but. Yeah, yeah. But I think the trans transmog I'm not entirely angry about. I think because I'm so blessed with games like World of War, Warcraft have extensive transmog, and I'm like, okay, I can. But I feel like with, with the whole idea that you can't change your hair or you can't change your ta- ta- tattoos or anything is like definitely a wasted p- p- potential. Yeah. I think I'm more than confident that will eventually be patched in. Yeah. But it's, it, it, I, I mean, like if it just more people complain about it, continues to go by by my thing of broken promises. Um, here's what. Okay, let me talk about this real quick. Um, so there's a side mission that you can get. Um, um, uh, there's a there's a um, there's a uh, high end clothing store. I think it's called like Jinguchi. I think. Um, there's a side mission where um, we go there. 
um, the stoner like talks to you for a second, and then you get attacked by a cyber psycho, right? Um, so you you pretend you you stop the cyber psycho, the police come, you tell them what happens, and then the shop owner guys, you know, what? next time swing by, I got something special for you. Nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. And there's other cool bits in that side mission. Like, yeah, you know, I'm just. <sighs> This is just one side. Mi- I'm just gonna. I hope it's it's just one, right? It should be okay. You guys okay with me just saying what the cool, really cool thing about the side mission is? Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. So one of the, so the police officer that comes by is the woman in the mantis blades from the original trailer. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that shit. No, like, you don't understand. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole fucking lizard thing and this, like, pop this shit. And I, you can have a whole conversation with her, and one of the options that you can end up getting to is, she goes, hey, why don't you join the force? And you're like, uh, sure, maybe I'll think about it. Nothing. More nothing. More broken promises. You go, and you want to order a spunky monkey, and then and then these guys show up and, and try to rob the place, and the guy and you stop them, and the guy goes, you know what? next one's on me. And then you open up the menu, you see the bottle for 50, for $50. It's just... I just feel... I just <laughs> constantly am let down by every aspect of whatever world building's in this game. Another thing about that is when you do end up getting free stuff, like with the free uh, cybernetic upgrades, it's hidden in the menus. So like, it's not like when you go and talk to the person, it's like, hey, I was sent here by this person to get this thing free. The game doesn't tell you. You need to go into the menus and find that one specific item that you're going to get free and <laughs> equip it. It's so dumb. Like It's just like, just give me a fucking little di- that dialogue option. Says, hey, I was sent here because I did this, and you're going to give me this thing free. They can just give it to you. It's a lot easier than having to search through all the upgrades and be like, ah, yes, this is the one specific item that you promised to give me free. Just give it to me. <laughs> Don't make me find it. The user all- is really bad. Mm-hmm. Can we all agree it's really annoying when it tells you, yeah, you should go read the shard, then you have to dig through that giant drop-down Ooh. menu to find it? Ah, there oh. was a side quest where I didn't even know where the fuck the shard menu was. I had to Google it. To Google or like, it or like or text somebody, and you open up your phone menu, and go to their name, and hit message, and you get at the top of the message <laughs> menu. And like, <laughs> See, I've I've had it where I keep accidentally calling that one lady that gives you gigs. And I feel like uh, she's annoyed Regina. by me at this point. <laughs> the text her Used to be a journalist, her. weren't you? I'm like, listen, man, I'm sorry. I, I was supposed to text you, accidentally called you, goodbye. <laughs> you know? Like, what the fuck? I had something important also, to tell you, but I called you. Can't tell you. Gotta text it. Yeah, gotta also, text I, it. I don't know if this is just the PS5 version, but I have to double click my middle button to open my map. I click it once and it instantly exits out of it. Yeah, that's a bug apparently <laughs> everyone has. Yeah. It's I know so I'm, weird. I have to like double click it. <laughs> on uh, PC for me, whenever I'm using controller at least, the uh and it's an Xbox it's not called the menu, whatever the fuck the stupid three line thing is, is that it- just if I hold, squares? it's lines. the The hamburger button, not the cheese. <laughs> the slices. hamburger button. Yeah. yeah, the hamburger button. The line. Um, I've if, never if, heard of hold that. Yeah, if if you hold it, it goes to the. What What do you call it? It's the three three. Yeah, I call it the is, menu button. That, that like is called the hamburger menu. It's, it's called a hamburger menu. I, I learned that a few years ago. It's called a hamburger menu. I was like, what? That's what? dumb. Can we agree? Because it doesn't say menu. No. There's, there's no words on it. Yeah, we've lost start and select a long time ago. We we have options and share. Or, uh, no, that doesn't even have the name on on the on the dual, not dual shock five. The dual no, sense. It's, 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 it's a hamburger button. It's lines and it's. Oh price. my god! If, if one more fucking person on this call calls it a hamburger button, I'm leaving. It's hamburgers and fries. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace the hamburger feature. <laughs> I I hate this. I didn't uh, know one of the senses on the dual sense was was taste. <laughs> I'm not licking my dual sense. <laughs> oh god. Uh, fuck. Where were we? 
<laughs> you can vibrate, can, vibrate for specific can we, Sorry, go. can we talk about Keanu, Keanu Reeves more, please, and how much of a jackass he is? And it's so weird to see Keanu Reeves as a jackass when he looks like the happiest man on earth. And then, and then he's calling it, and he's calling me a bitch. And I'm like, Keanu Reeves, please don't. He's, he's such a bully, dude. He's, <laughs> he's not a nice and guy, you know? And it's like, okay. We know Keanu Reeves is a great actor. We know that he's, like, the brightest man on Earth. Like, we get this. We understand this. But when he's staring me directly in the face and he's saying that I am a bitch-ass pussy and I go, Keanu Reeves, please. <laughs> he says it with such vigor. And I'm just like, ouch. And it's just like, the one thing I will also bring up about him and about how Johnny is, like, used in this game. The fact that he's used, and I'm not going to spoil any side, side, side quest or anything. But the fact that he's used in, in the side quest also makes me really feel like like he is a part of V's life in such a parasitic way that, which I bring this up, I brought this up to like a couple people. There's a side quest I did, not going to spoil it, early on that I had, to make a, I had to make a choice at the end. I had two options. And Johnny appeared and was like, oh, you can either do this and be this type of a jerk or do this and be this type of a jerk. Good luck, V. And I was like, okay, well, you're making this sound like the better option. So I'm going to pick that. And then he goes, you really fucked it up now, V. And I'm like, I do. He's literally <laughs> that voice in your head when you pick an option and you go, is this the right option? I don't know. I'm going to hate myself for it later. But oh, surprise, you have a person hating you for it right there. Uh, and question staring at you as you do it. <laughs> question for Dio since you beat it. Because uh, for me, it was really weird that they wait so long for you to to uh get to johnny is for me i was like eight hours into the game before i even met him um does his frequency of popping up randomly or i guess like even in main or sides side story stuff does that frequency increase the further you get into the game yeah okay more more johnny is good johnny but so, yeah talking about listen, i joked about this earlier i will say it again you probably all know what the fuck I'm going to say. So I have a mouthful of M&M's while I speak this. Is it regular or, or peanut M&M's? This is an important distinction. Or crispy. Regular, because I am not a monster. Wait, what kind but are I'm they? Say it. Regular. What? Oh, you are a monster. You're, you're I'm, awful. I'm a monster, because why the fuck can't we romance Johnny? And hey, hear me out. Hear me out. He's stuck in my head. He's going to know if I want to fuck him before I even know that I would not want to fuck him. There's some real Master <laughs> Chief shit going on. There is. I just I don't understand. And just, again, the romance options in, in this game are so fucking just slim. There's like two people per gender. And one, and you know, per gay, yeah. lesbian, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. just I wasn't like, even... With a game that focuses on freedom, because I, I kind of spoiled, I looked up who I can romance, because you know, I need to know these things ahead of time. I need to have my choice. And the one straight romance for, for chicks, I'm just like, who the fuck is this guy? He's like, oh, you only see him if you do these specific side side quests. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I wasn't even really aware that there were romance options. Like, I got like one <laughs> random weird little hookup thing, because I'm, I'm playing as female uh, V, I guess. And it was one of the I don't even remember her name. She she's one of those. She's early on. She gives you that mission to steal the droid or something. And then oh, I met her up at a hotel. Yeah, mm -hmm. I stout. I think. Yeah, I think was her name. And just like random little side story thing happened. Yeah, you meet up at a hotel. You do the cool mm -hmm. thing, and then it's done. I'm just like, okay, that's whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, for those who don't know, and this isn't a spoiler. There's two main romances for each straight slash gay there's mm -hmm. for male or for male characters the straight option is a uh, pan am which is what i and, went with and the gay option is uh who is it yeah judy uh no for, for no, uh, yeah dude. um i forget his I name i can't remember who it is i know who it dude. is it feels name. weird that they would even lock it and off by gender to be honest and yeah. there's and there's no one right. character later on that's kind of spoilery that i that i won't say mm. that you can romance as a dude it's like it's like a second gay option mm. for females the only the only straight option is some random dude you meet through side quests I don't even remember his name. River. And then, River is a lovely man. 
Listen, I'm sure he's lovely when I meet him, but I haven't yet. Never <laughs> and is the gay a, option is, a, the, is uh, Judy, yeah. which is fine. But the fact there's only two for each, mm-hmm. which to me, I'm like with a game that's all about freedom. And yes, you can romance people off the street, but that's not like a story based romance to me. Well, and I'm just like, <laughs> why? <laughs> and also, I actually have a pro. So far, as far as I've been able to tell. River is the only person that, that if you try to do a same sex relationship, they reject you. Because, uh, so it at least allows for that dialogue option, then. Yeah, because like, um, so like, there's a part where he can try and kiss him. He goes, "Dude, what? Whoa, what's going on?" Right, and if it, it feels so awkward and weird. And like, why would you even include this when like? It kind of you know, gives me Dragon Age Inquisition vibes. Yeah, you can't because do, I'm, like, like, I'm replaying that game, and you can romance, you can flirt with Dorian as a female character, and I'm like, oh, that's not right. If yeah. you're male <laughs> and you talk to Judy, you don't have, you don't even, you don't even have, a, you don't have any options regarding that, you know. And it feels uh, really weird that they. I think they've been watching that Angry Joe video where he sees a gay romance option. He's like, ew. It feels really weird that they they, they just single out male male like that. Sorry. If you play as a a woman, uh, Penem rejects you multiple times. Oh, okay. That's good. I can can verify that. Actually, no, that's not good. What am I saying? (laughs) That's that's why is it only <laughs> why is it only I, 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 I think it comes down it to the way rejections? it's done because like yeah in-game characters should have it feels weird to say but in, in characters should have like their autonomy to decide who mm. or what they're into but like if the way that it sounds like that's written from what you experienced me so that's that's just comes off as really fucking shitty yeah, like I like, so like it, I'm not gay, bro. Like something yeah, like that. I mean, it's not. It's no. not. He. It's not quite. Like my problem isn't necessarily how it's how it's handled. My my problem is it's the fact that it's like you can't tr- you can't try and go to Judy and she rejects you as well. You know, um, it's the, the those options for Judy just don't even exist. Right. Yeah, that is male. incredibly weird. Um, Dio, when you tried to um. I, I guess flirt with Judy. What, what what was her reaction? Was it like kind of dismissive, like playing it off, or Judy doesn't really reject you? Really I think like you mean uh, Pan Am. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry, Pan Am. Am. So uh, I you have three chances to try to flirt with Pan Am. Uh, one uh, with uh, she will reject both sexes because of the storyline, and the other she just was really. I don't know, cute and honest with me that she doesn't swing that way. So I, I was okay with it. It wasn't like mm-hmm. the way Mesa was saying about uh, River. I think what you yeah, said. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, he he's very he's like cool with it afterward. Like he's like you know, whoa, uh, yeah, hey man, I just don't do that, right? But my my issue is that why why if you're playing a gay character, only gay characters get rejected. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. Straight characters don't get rejected. I, and they even get the option. It's bizarre. Yeah, exactly. I that, that makes me that that mm, that makes me really uncomfortable. I mean, cuz they cuz they could have easily done it where the characters like is I would say Mass Effect 3 did this really good. There there's there certain characters where you could romance or attempt to romance and then at the end you were uh you were rejected and the game didn't tell you that that was going to happen. But I feel like what's cyberpunk could have done was they could have had characters react to the options that you pick when you're not flirting with, with them and maybe rejected you like oh uh, i don't agree with how you did this or i don't agree with how you did this i'm not attracted to you or at least just say it like they weren't att- attracted to you instead of like having it specifically be you can still flirt with these with these characters but then you get rejected even though like you like you can't romance it's like pan am's response to me sounds a lot better than river's response to be, just, fair, like, you, to be fair you do go for it with river he, but yeah, it's weird that, that that's weird. like the nu- <laughs> but that's like the nuclear option just like run up to someone and be like oh give it to me versus just like hey <laughs> oh, you want it, do, it like that again do, do you want to do, would you like to engage in the fun time <laughs> 
<laughs> Would you like to engage with me? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> but yeah, I'm sorry to put it in better terms than that. Like uh, to have that option, t- and I, I haven't seen the context of it, but like, what is it? It's just an option that says like, "Go for a kiss," like something like that. It's literally like it, uh, you're doing a toast, and one of them is to us, kiss. And then like, yeah, that's like whoa. Yeah, that's a bit more of a nuclear option than just being like, hey, <laughs> hey, do you, would you like to? Because I feel like right at the beginning, that's an option with a Jackie also, and I'm kind of, you know, kind of mad that that wasn't. Part of that one. It's like to us, and you don't kiss him, but then you do with that guy, and you're like, oh, Jackie respects the friendship us. too much. <laughs> Listen, I am bro. also mad that you couldn't romance him. I get that he has a very nice girlfriend. But come on, guys! At least give us more than two options, please. Or mi- how, how are you going to do that to Misty? I mean, before listen, Misty's a very nice person. Because I'm <laughs> listen when I play these 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 games, and these games are like, oh, you you can romance people, and then they're like, here's your two options, and I'm just like, <laughs> Dragon Age gave me like five. <laughs> <laughs> here's dope. There's got Chuck two in front of me. Be like, all right, pick. And I'm just like, but the one straight option is like, I, mean, I haven't I mean, even met him yet. <laughs> even The Witcher Three was pretty, uh, was pretty liberal with letting you just like sleep around, even outside the uh, hey. the two main options. Hey, you, know, you, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm continuing my train of broken promises here. Two prostitutes, really? Just two? Mason and needs j- more prostitutes in Jig Jig Street. <laughs> I mean, it feels it feels like a feature that was supposed to be everywhere that they just didn't have time to implement everywhere. Maybe they have prostitute unions. They have to limit their number <laughs> down so they get their yeah. mandated union hours. I was also going to mention something, but that m- might get us taken off a of tweet, so I'm not going to. <laughs> you can kind of guess what I was going to bring up on that topic. I have no idea what it is. The amount of things you could find in crazy numbers around the amount of uh for the amount of bilbo baggins that you find on people yes Yes. (laughs) that they had that they're putting a patch out for (laughs) because they're like listen there's too many of these i have not seen a single bilbo baggins anyway really because i found like 20 (laughs) i mean i only started playing it on what was it like last sunday i think yeah no no bilbos they're on there aren't a lot of people. Okay. And I'm like, hey, man, more power to you. But this is fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, coming back to how I felt about the story. Um, that like, is a hell of a segue. Hell yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this so the, the, the main story uh, itself, the like, it's not bad, but it's not not really that interesting. Like the Oh, I'm dying. I need to do some mission to save myself. Like, whatever. But the, the character interaction, like, with Johnny, with Pan Am, with Judy, and with Rogue, like, are the best. So, like, easily the best thing uh, inside the game. It's bizarre because it feels like it's the only ex- aspect that uh, they brought, brought from Witcher, like, the quality of the the character stories basically that but yeah the only thing i'm sorry good because being quite honest if the if the characters were well i wouldn't say bad but if they were mediocre or whatever i would have given up on the game because the the rest of the game like i've i've said earlier doesn't really feel satisfying i think i really like certain characters i really liked i mean i mean i like jackie um i i like uh keanu reeves good boy uh but he's not as, as, an, as, he's as an very very rude <laughs> as an actor his acting abilities are a bit narrow but it suits here so um not really a detriment there one i guess his, actually one of his best roles yeah um but i think oh, just like this oh, yeah. is that's worth saying about his roles, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I just like the entire surrounding package. Like, even if I did um, like the characters and those interactions, um, like, my interest was just too low. 
by that point to like really have that be like the standout thing that brings me back in. Like to be fair to to Johnny and Keanu to a degree, I don't really think that the character Johnny with the way he's written would have worked without Keanu Reeves. Like he is such an asshole uh, at the beginning of the game, but because Keanu is so charismatic, you don't really care. Well, if it was any other I actor aside from Keanu Reeves, would you have liked him as much? Nope. No. <laughs> what, what if they cast David Hayter and then, like, when the game came out, turned out as Kiefer Sutherland? <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I will say about how that characterization is, because there, there is a point, actually pretty early on, where he goes from being an asshole to, like, you know what? We can help one another. And it's such a fucking turn where I'm just like, you just punched me out of my wheelchair and called me a bitch-ass pussy. And now you're like, you know what, kid? Let's help one another. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that's a pretty far cry from punching me out of my wheelchair there's a mission where um what was it you're you have to go you're trying to find evelyn at a place where what was it? It, it was at a sex house or something like that and uh they're saying like oh well there's two people here that are that have like open rooms and johnny looks he says like huh, he can only get two people to open their legs for you loser like, oh, like, oh, Keanu Reeves, please. Like, <laughs> it's so fucking gratuitously against sex workers, and the game doesn't really talk about it. I know it's, it's, it felt really gratuitous. I don't know why. No. It's the there. one thing I will bring up about what Mesa brought up earlier about like broken promises was when when they were talking about the character customization for this game a while ago. They had brought up the idea that one of the customization options was your character had three role role models to pick from. And one of them was Johnny. And that would have opened up other di di dialogue options. And I, I'm just going to be fully uh, transparent again. I have a Cyberpunk 2020 character. Like I have a character sheet that has a character on it. And my character was a rocker boy class, which is basically you're just a wannabe rock star. And if if they had kept that option to pick one of your role, role models, have one of your role, role models be Johnny, I would have, I would have, died to see the reaction that your character would have would have had to him because they even said oh if you pick this option you'll have different dialogue options and i'm like imagine if we had had that you could have picked johnny as your role, role model and have the different dialogue options when he's punching you out of your wheelchair and calling call, calling you a bitch like uh, so i wish they would have done that like i wish they would have done that Slightly building off of that, based on what um, like lifestyle you chose at the beginning, you get you can sh you have like specific like corpo or street kid or a nomad uh, dialogue options. Does that actually bring anything substantial? Is that just more flavor text? Because it hasn't necessarily. A, a just uh, I've actually had a few quests where I was able to skip combat by using street kid di dialogue. I was like, oh, you don't want this game coming after you, do you? And the person's like, oh, not really. Here's your money. Please, like, leave me the fuck alone. So I've been able to, like, skip combat and stuff. But that's very, like, it's happened maybe, like, three times. Or, or I've been able to, like, make shit cheaper. Or I've been able to get more money out of other people being able to use that. But it hasn't happened in, like, story-related stuff. That's fair. <laughs> uh, let's which, I, which, which I don't expect it to. I mean, it's cool that it, that's even an option. And it's like, hey, man, I know how much that's, that's worth. And the one thing I will say that, that I like about this that more RPGs should do is when you enter dialogue and there's a dialogue option that you don't have enough points to pick, you can enter your pause menu in dialogue and put points towards stuff, which I love. Give me more RPGs that let me do that so I'm not locked out of stuff. Because that's a great option. There's like, oh, I need one more point to unlock this di uh, this this dialogue option, and I have a saved point. You could go into your menu, uh, un unlock that point, and the dialogue option is instantly ready to pick. More RPGs need to do this. Give you the freedom to open your menu even in like di dialogue choices. And I feel like it's dumb that most haven't done this. I yeah. would do. I would do something similar and. Um... And Deus Ex, where I would always keep like a spare point or two, uh, just unspent in case I ran into a scenario where, oh, you need the uh, long jump or you need the ability to hack like this level of security. So I just kind of kept that as an insurance policy. And I think extending that to 
uh, dialogue options could be really useful for people who are trying to like um, well, min max that thing, I guess. Well, it's also that, but it's also just being able to open it in those di- just dialogue options, which you would not, you would like, you would be surprised how many games don't let you do that. Just, yeah. Just, just the fact that they thought about being able to do that. Cause I, I have, I think I have like 20 Horden fucking upgrade points, not like love what points, but like upgrade points. Cause I'm just like, Oh shit, what am I going to need this? But it's like- just being able to open it while you're in a option is super helpful. I and think I on one hand, that. I think on one hand it's a bit game breaking, but in the sense that, you know, players are just going to reload their save and do it anyway. Mm-hmm. So you might as well just fucking, add that functionality in and you know skipping that dumb step helps more than people think it does it helps the gameplay going so it's not like you have to keep reloading your shit you you just be like oh i need one more point of hacking to discuss what this object does boop clicks it done (laughs) i i i don't know i just i it, it was actually one of my favorite like systems that they had implemented in this game so far and it's such a little dumb thing but it makes it so much easier so let's see we're coming up on about two hours here does uh are there any more specific topics or categories you might have missed that anyone else wants to go on i don't think we really talked about the driving oh yeah we 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 totally didn't um also the fact that no one cares about getting rear-ended in this game it's for me it's third person is always optimal for driving in games because you can actually see your environment you can drive efficiently Mm -hmm. first person driving is always clunky as hell but the driving does yeah the 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 driving in third person does not feel good to me whatsoever it feels like you're driving on ice and in that regard at least in first person it feels um not not diegetic, but like when you the car is swerving, you can see that swerve firsthand. It, it feels better versus third person where your car just doesn't control the way you want it to. I feel like motorcycles drive better than actual cars do, but that's just me. Do. Yeah. I don't trust myself on a motorcycle. I've played too much GTA first person where you crash into something, you go flying. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> but like uh, uh, Cyberpunk does something that I don't really understand why some open world games do that is this the cars or whatever that you get in the beginning are not only bad in this and that they are not really that fast or whatever but they drive awfully but it en- it ends up giving the player a really bad experience at the start of the game like mm-hmm. oh does, do the other ones actually drive decently yeah Oh wow! I didn't yeah, know that's that. Why, that's why the cars are so expensive because they're good. <laughs> well, that, that's why I didn't spend any money on cars. I'm like, why am I going to spend all this, all these oh, resources really? on something that doesn't control well? Yeah, well, I have not bought that, yeah. any cars. I've not bought any cars. I've just been again. I've been using Jackie's motorcycle. <laughs> I didn't get Jackie's fun. motorcycle. Did you it's do the quest? Is there quest. a specific side quest you have so, to do? Uh, yes. Mm. Where did you send his body? I sent it to uh, his mama. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Then you need to... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'd say it's okay to talk about this quest because yeah. it's early on. Yeah. Um, I didn't send it anywhere. I left it in the car because I thought I was going to be coming back to it. <laughs> I then- I sent it to his mom. Good, because that's what I did too. You get a quest called... <sighs> I forget. It's been a bit... But, um... You should check um you should check um uh you should call his mom and then you can do a funeral and yeah I did not call his mom. <laughs> you should call his mom, yeah. Call call Jackie's mom, damn it. <laughs> there you get his um, bike. The the really cool thing about the bike too is if you're the nomad path, there was an option to let Jackie know that his like muffler is broken. And if and when you get his bike, he has actually fixed it and it drives faster. Oh wow! But that's only if you do the uh, nomad path, which again, little shit that I love deeply because <laughs> it's something tiny. And then when you when you get his bike, V actually says, "Oh hey, it looks like he fixed this." And when you drive the bike, it drives uh, faster. Okay. So cool. But to be clear, though. Uh, 
even if the driving, the handling of the cars get better, the more I progress the game, the I still feel the drive itself is doesn't really feel good. Like most of the time I was okay. close to a fast travel point. I would always use fast travel because anything bigger than 1.2 kilometers of distance was torture to drive to. Unless I had a motorcycle, motorcycles handles way better than a cars. See, I just constantly drive because that's how you get the side side quest and gigs and stuff. So uh, I just build- I, I have driven everywhere. <laughs> I think to build off that, it seems like you guys didn't have the same thing as me, where the streets for me are pretty damn empty. So driving, like even the handling, isn't really much of an issue if there's nothing else on the road. Yeah. Um. Was was there plenty of cars for you guys? Or no. yes. Oh yeah. Not for me. <laughs> for me, yeah. I would say there were some cars, but not much pedestrians, I think. Oh, for me, there's a shit ton of people. I can't tell you how many people I've I've accidentally fucking (laughs) break. In front of my bike, because I fly off a cliff, and I'm like, oh, no, I have to tackle someone. And the cops are like, wee, 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 woo. I'm like, no. (laughs) It's, oh, my God, it's terrible, the amount of people walking around in my fucking game. I don't get why you guys haven't seen anybody. All of my streets are packed. (laughs) I don't know why. Give me your guys' game. Make it easier to fucking drive places without w- running into people. <laughs> I, I would share footage of uh, of my streets, but uh, the game will let me. Crashes my software. <laughs> Even uh, sh- uh, sh- Shadow Play? I have not tried Shadow Play. I'll have to well, try there you it. Go. Well, there you go. There <laughs> it is. <laughs> Uh, let, let's see. Are there any uh, other topics or whatnot that we miss out on that anyone feels yeah. passionately about? I, I, I got to go through most of my rant. Yeah, I mean, other other than the fact that I'm legitimately having fun, and I feel like we should also let it be known that if you're legitimately having fun with us, don't feel bad about having fun. I mean, oh, yeah. feel bad knowing that the company shit, but like, don't feel bad knowing that you're legitimately having a fun time. Because I'm I think glad. it's not being said enough. Because I have a couple friends who are like who are lo- lo- loving it as much as I am, and it's like don't feel bad about having fun. Again, I hate I love things everybody else hates. So like, don't feel bad about like having a legitimate fun time. Well, just to build off that, it's um so the previous coverage that we had done for this on a game session and then my articles, whatever, it's very important to criticize everything else that's going on with cdpr everything that's going on with this game um the the entire pr PR nightmare that's going on with the refunds that's going on with the crunch that's going on the transphobia everything on that needs to be discussed and it has been discussed on the on the show Mm -hmm. previously but um i think every piece of art does deserve its own due uh criticism for what it is as a piece of art and like any piece of art it deserves criticism of every single variety, and I'm glad we were able to uh, talk about the game on a game basis af- after we had gone through the other stuff. And I'm but very I think- happy that I had um, everyone that I had on the show previously, which um, last week it was uh, Matt Stormageddon that was on to help us discuss that. And I'm very grateful for everyone that's here today. Thank- that's Sarah, Mesa, and Dio. Very happy to have Dio here today. Dio is always I'm welcome. Happy to be here today like art art ev- everybody's gonna have different opinions on art <laughs> like it's the same as music same as m- movies with the whole wonder wonder woman thing going on on twitter right now which i think is fucking stupid no one's gonna like not everyone's gonna like something but some people are gonna like something it's it's just whatever basically if you like this but you could still criticize it don't feel bad like what you want to like, damn it. Don't let the internet fucking tell you what not to like. <laughs> the, the, you heard it first here, folks. The internet's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> the internet's stupid. Just like like what you want to like. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> Let's see. If everyone wants to give, uh, I guess, maybe their final thoughts on the game, if you had to like summarize it overall. Uh, Mesa, if you want to take the magic conch, do you, do you want the magic conch sound? I'm sure. All right, who did it last time? Was was that Matt or? I think it was Matt who did it last time. What, what's the sound like that? 
Oh no. The, the, the answer is no. Let me think. Um hmm. I'm trying to trying to elaborate beyond broken promises, but um um I think Cyberpunk cy- did you crash Mesa? Maybe have you, maybe, have you become maybe Cyberpunk? That's my <laughs> maybe that's my criticism. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I gotta gotta send more information from the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, just I like it's it's a it's a game. It is a that's, game. That's mired in everything that's happened about it and to it. Well <laughs> it 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 can't transcend any it, it can't transcend anything. You know? Mm-hmm. It's just kind of stuck being a video game. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, what, what are your overall thoughts, if you had to summarize? Like, honestly, I feel like Cyberpunk is a game that is fundamentally broken, and no amount of patches besides a full relaunch or like a, a year or a, or a year and a half of new development will really change much of the game like has a bunch of seasons that don't really talk to each other that well uh the 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 gameplay isn't really that satisfying for the genre and the only at least for me the only really good thing is the story but even then that would be better on a on a TV show, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. All right, uh, Sarah. Uh, I just feel weird saying that I'm one of the only people who's enjoying it for what it is. Um, it obviously has some issues, but from what I was looking forward to, this is everything that I've wanted in it so far, and I'm really enjoying my time. And I. It's like it's it's the first open world game that I've played since I honestly think Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is such a long time, where I have just legitimately wanted to do honest to God everything. <laughs> it's a crime that Syndicate had uh the brother as a playable character. I like Jacob and I get the whole Ubisoft thing, but I loved him as a character. I loved him and Evie a lot. So you leave my boy alone. <laughs> Jacob can exist, just I don't want to play as him. <laughs> I mean, I get that, but that's an argument that we could have somewhere else because I legit thought it was really cool having a playbook. He was the more fighting character, and Evie was the more stealthy one. But that's not why we're here. I I'm gonna change the stream title right now. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right in the last couple minutes. <laughs> um, shit. I guess I'll give my thoughts. Um, I think it's basically what I said at the top. This is. Uh, by far the most mediocre title I've played in an extremely long time, especially when you contrast it against the uh, the hype and marketing that was behind it. And even if we had put it on our 2020 game of the year uh, contenders, it, it would have not have even been remote to being on my list whatsoever. Same. Mm-hmm. I mean, Same. it was. I I actually had it as an honorable mention on mine. It, but no. I just didn't put it anything number wise because I hadn't beaten it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Much like Fallout seventy six before it, it's just fun to talk about. For <laughs> for the record, I don't think Cyberpunk is necessarily a bad game. I it's it's just so middle of the road. Yeah. But I think that's going to go ahead and do it. Uh Dia, where can everybody find you? Uh if you're interested in my shit posts and bad opinions, you can find me on the Twitter right below at DUMF, not motherfucker. <laughs> 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 and if you're interested, you can join us on our on our Discord at the official SGDC podcast. But yeah, that's it. All right. Awesome. I have I, I loved having you here. I'm glad you reached out to uh, come on, and you're always more than welcome in the future. Thank you. Love it being here. 
All right, so I think that's going to go ahead and do it. Um, just a repeat of the top. You can go and find us on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, where you can find all of our content. There's a link tree down below. You can find all of our stuff down there. Um, thank you guys for watching or listening or... No, that those are the only two. Watching or listening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we have <laughs> tasting yet. Lick, lick your dual sense because we tell you to. <laughs> yeah, lick lick the dual sense. It has that hamburger button now. It might taste it's like a one. lot safer than licking a switch cartridge, which I still can't believe was a thing about a year ago. Mesa, do you think the French fry button tastes different than the menu button on the on the dual sense? Well, it depends on what type of fries it is, because like you know. <laughs> Is it sweet potato fries or just regular potato oh, fries? Not that. Sweet potato fries, fries are better than regular potatoes. I disagree. Well, yeah. it, it, we're, you're I allowed to have bad that. opinions. Oh, 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 sure. Mr. Cold Fry Lover. All right, whatever. Cold <laughs> fries are a delicacy. <laughs> that's just cool. Dude. How do you do that? <laughs> With ketchup. Ooh, that's how no. I do it. <laughs> all right, that's going to do it. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.